I think especially at a final table, um, more so than a cash game, you're really playing the stack size and your opponent more than the cards. Reads on opponents are just other pieces of information you might have to narrow down what you think they're going to do. I, I would say just walking by a random table, I would be able to tell you after five minutes um, most of the abilities and capabilities of each individual at the table. And watching people's hands, watching their chips, watching how they play with their chips, watching their mouth, watching their neck, watching their eyes, and using that information to make you more likely to do something. Whether, whether or not they're fidgety or not, whether or not they have like the heavy breaths, and whether or not that even correlates to weakness or strength. I can tell when, by, by someone's you know, voice how confident they are usually. If I were to just get to a table and there's some clown from Brooklyn just shouting in all of his Brooklyn lingo, then uh, yeah, I would tend to believe that he's going to play a couple more hands. Some players talk just to talk. Some players talk to probe for information. Some players talk to tilt you. Uh, some players talk just because they like to talk and end up tilting you. Um, and yeah, it can be it can be a factor. Got this body in the pot over there. He was so interested. Had chips in his hand. Yeah, I saw that. Too. Just folded his check. Didn't even care. Just mucked it. Just mucked it. What are you guys talking about? What did I do? Well, see, while you're playing the game, we're all playing you. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs>when when russ came to me part of the initial pitch that i made to him was running simulations because i felt like that was a very key part of the training experience i mean part of the reason i wanted to play the mock final tables was so i could actually experience what it's like to take my 24 million chip stack and win you know there's so many situations that can arise and the fact is we've looked at all those situations you know, when we've played these out, we have been able to see them in front of us and be able to go, okay, that's cool. What, what do we do? What's the strategy when this happens? Because we've already kind of seen every different real tangible permutation. I've learned a lot about each of the players, seen all their hands, watched them on the coverage. I did my best to find out everything I could find out about every player at the final table. And I feel like having done that, we have a pretty good sense of where these players are and, and how they play and stylistically just like how they're going to perform at the final table. You know, he sees the mistakes that we make as them or the things that we do extremely well as them. And it allows him to really adjust and balance himself accordingly. The Sims are actually awesome. I mean, I've been really impressed with how everyone's been playing. Uh, we see the hands if it goes to the flop and even pre-flop a lot of times we turn them up. So everyone gets to discuss right on the spot what he or she thinks is good. And we've talked about it, and Russ gets it. And I feel like having done that will provide Russ with an experience edge. He's played this final table before, but I felt like it was just one more thing that I didn't want to leave to chance. Now that they've had a couple months off and they know there's so much at stake, they're sitting there, they're gonna be thinking about so many things. You know, I don't want to be the first to go out, I don't want to be embarrassed on TV, my family and friends are all here, I don't want to disappoint them. There's a lot that can get into their head. Players can make mistakes um, due to stack pressure all the time. Or I think the payout jump pressure uh, plays above, plays can play tricks with your decision making. You know, we're going in not with a, a, a strategy that this is the strategy. We're going in with an adaptive mindset saying, let's see what happens and go from there. No matter who tells you that he's playing his normal game at the main event final table, he's going to be lying. These guys aren't just run-of-the-mill players, they're there for a reason. So they're gonna make it as difficult on us as possible. In the mock final table, as I've run into situations where my emotions told me to do something and I've kind of reeled myself back in and made the right play. Later on, you can go back and figure out exactly what the situation was, what the stack sizes were, because we have BJ recording everything. On, on one level, I just watched the review sessions to see how they're using the information I logged for them, or like chip counts, relative stacks, and things like that, because I want to give them the best possible information so they can go over it in the best possible way. Well, because the Ace of Hearts is out there too, so. Yeah, I didn't think it was There was also that hand where like, on the flop, it checked real quick. Like you checked, yeah. but I took a long time checking. Yeah. And then Leo checked behind as a pre-flop razor on the ace high board. He didn't even see that. To be honest, like watching the hand in real life, I thought you had a hand like Jack-7. 
That also played into why I rate the term because I thought I could have looked strong. Why? You have nine high. Why not just take it down right now? Right. It's like, like there's only three and a half. If he folds a three or a four, that's great for you. If he doesn't, you're still okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You have so much out. Right. So much. Out. Definitely, the review is uh, pointing out thought process flaws on certain hands for me, for sure. Uh, and some of that might be tied to emotions I'm having at the table when I make those plays. I think the best part of these review sessions isn't necessarily Russ seeing what works, but Russ getting to see the treacherous mistakes that can be made under the pressure of the final table when eight and a half million dollars is on the line. I'm just sitting there enjoying the ride as I get to hear these guys talk on a much higher level than me about what the right play is, what the wrong play is, and the differences between them. Uh, I, I know there are there are countless poker fans that would pay big money to, to sit in my seat and do what I'm doing. But there are also a lot of professional poker players who are very good players who would pay big money to sit in my seat and see what I'm seeing.